Hi, this is Julie, J Auto Trading Strategies. Take a look at the markets this afternoon. Um, we had the um, E-mini rally up 1.75%, um, let's call it. Rallied up to the 61.8 um, and pulled back a little bit on some divergence, momentum divergence. So I would expect this to come back to the PPOC and the BWAP uh, Asia Globex. So um, other than that, um, Baynard came out and was dovish, so that caused the rally back up, the retracement. But I'm not so convinced that this is any good news for the bulls because she said something interesting. She, you know, intimated that the Fed members are all looking at this negative interest rate uh, fiasco that has been created globally and everyone is recognizing that it is not doing any good. Um, so I'm not sure when this data-driven Fed of ours will raise interest rates, but at least it's for recognizing that um, they're in a little bit of a jam um, with our numbers not being perfect to raise. There's no inflation for one. The GDP is bad and the ISM numbers are not good. So um, I know that they've had good reports, but overall the, the economy is anemic and it's not good to raise and, and to weakness. Um, so they are in a little bit of a pickle, but December looks like it's a go for sure uh, that the market at least is pricing in. So unless there's some more rhetoric that comes out between now and next week, I would expect the market to respond um, mixed um, until the next week announcement and then sell off and do its market sell off when they say anything more definitive like we're going in December we decided now is not the time whatever how they couch it but no one is expecting September so let's look at um, how the e-mini traded to see how we can take advantage of a move like this so when you see strength coming into the market for instance, at the open and it just rallies up, either you can trade your um, reversals right there on your larger chart, or you can drop this down to a smaller time frame, something easier to manage for your budget, more of a budget-friendly trade. And um, let's put it on a six, six tick bar and show you how just as easy it is to get into those reversals. Um, I keep doing that. This, um, here we go. Picking up a trade at the VWAP, for instance, uh, or waiting for price to get above the super trend and taking that first pullback. This is a very sweet setup right here. This is my inflections. Um, long setup, it will get the breakout and that first pullback. So, um, but if you do get a nice trade off of a VWAP area, that's always good to take. Um, And this bar looks like it's a little bit too um, little uh, for the volume that was in the market today. So let's kick that up to a 3.6 and this is better. This is much better. This shows you the breakout, the little resting period here, and then get back long. Let me put this back on the inflections. So you get your breakout. I didn't get an inflection here because it really didn't change direction like it did here. So you just get long and hold it, um, taking it up and it went sideways um, going into the close. So, um, and here was again the 61.8 and the R1 level. So I would expect this to come back um, into the value area and we will see um, what happens. Let me show you the daily, um, which was very interesting for me as this is my indicator. It did not close below the super trend. 
So we are, our uptrend is still valid and we're back into the sideways channel, almost up into back into it. We're at the bottom of that channel. So um, get ready to pull your hair out <laughs> if we go back into here, because it will just chop around until next week. If we bounce down, we can at least, you know, trade to the 200 EMA or something, but um, it may, we may just have to put the EMA, uh, the ES on hold uh, and look for another market and show you the weekly, you know, my 2193 still holding price. But if I get back into this mess, that's going to get popped during FOMC and then flush but here is that um uh, squeeze coming in where the market's just going to compress on itself compress on itself until it explodes one way or the other and with the statement that boehner did make that the fed is aware that they've gotten themselves into a predicament i don't think um the weakness in the market really is going to stop them from staying on a program of trying to increase the interest rates a little bit. 25 basis points is not going to kill this market. Um, and they would have a little bit more room to come back down if they need to, but I think that they recognize that coming back down is not necessary. Did you see that? Just this big push. So, um, <clears throat> It is now 3.30 uh, p.m., so it is moving its way back down to the um, value area. So um, y'all have a good day. Uh, the Japanese yen is going to have a big announcement next week at the same time as our FOMC minutes. And today they are deciding to get into corporate bonds, and that's why this rallied up uh, so much. Um, but the yen is just another amazing um, story. There's no intrinsic value to the yen at all. And um, I think that um, they're in a real hole with their quadrillion trillion yen. I don't think anybody ever expects in their wildest imaginations that any of that's ever going to get repay, repaid. So why people keep jumping into the yen as a flight to safety is beyond my head scratching. So I don't get that one, but go with it. If it's trading up, all we do is just jump on it. Don't, we're not here to try to make sense of, you know, what's actually going on in the market. Um, it doesn't make sense most of the time. So just, just go with it. If it's moving, if it's going sideways, we stay out, recognize the chop, fit your bar to the price action as best as you can like this is and once it starts dropping sideways get out um just get out trades over all right guys y'all be good and we will see you tomorrow thank you